Hey, welcome to CNC Router Project Start to Finish. A previous video on this channel, subtitled Cutting Oversized Pieces Part 1, looked at one approach to machining parts that exceed the limits of a CNC router's workspace in a single dimension. In that particular instance, the part to be cut fit within the workspace widthwise, but not lengthwise. The workaround involved a combination of toolpath tiling and movement of the material along the Y axis in precise increments. The end result was one continuous oversized piece. Sometimes, however, both the width and length of a part will extend beyond what the router bed can accommodate. In these instances, the only option, short of finding someone with a larger router setup, is to break the part into smaller pieces, which can then be cut and joined to form the oversized piece afterwards. It's this approach, along with a practical demonstration, that will be the focus of this video. As in the previous video, I'm going to be using the integrated tiling function of Vectrix VCAR Pro software for this tutorial. But like last time, it's also possible to do this manually, so I'll touch on that briefly as well. The part I'm going to be cutting is the backing piece of a sort of retro-style pub sign. It measures 35 inches in diameter, so I've created a correspondingly large job size within the software, actually slightly larger at 36 by 36. Under ordinary circumstances, this value would not exceed the actual available workspace, but when tiling, it needs to be at least as large as the part. I've gone ahead and created the toolpaths for this job, so now it's time to tile them. From the Toolpaths Operations menu, choose the Tile Toolpaths option. Place a checkmark in the box next to Tile Toolpaths and select the radio button for Individual Tiles. In this case, I've opted to make the tiles as large as possible. So the tile width and height have been set to the actual size of my router bed, which is 24 inches by 18 inches. For the tile overlap option, I specified a quarter of an inch. This setting is designed to ensure complete and clean transitions of toolpaths as they cross from one tile to another. Assuming the situation permits, I typically set this value equal to the diameter of the largest bit being used. To apply these settings, click on the Update Tiles button. You can see the job has been divided by grid lines into however many tiles are necessary, in this case, four. Finally, the options in the Toolpath Drawing section control how the toolpaths are displayed in 3D view. Active Tile simply determines which tile will be previewed, so T1 displays Tile 1 in the preview. Setting the Active Tile to T2 previews Tile 2, and so on. The Draw Toolpaths and Original Position for Visualization option determines the context in which the previews are displayed. With this option selected, as it was in the previous example, the toolpaths appear as if they were part of the larger piece of material that had been specified in the job setup. Deselecting this option results in the toolpaths appearing in the context of separate tiles and is a more realistic representation of how things will look on the router bed. At this point, the software has all the information it needs to make the tiles, but there's still another issue to address, and that's how to create the straight edges of the tiles. If we switch back into 2D view, you can see that all the tiles join with one another along straight edges. For instance, Tile 1 joins Tile 3 along this horizontal line. Tile 1 also joins Tile 2 along this vertical line. So in order for the tiles to assemble together neatly, these straight edges really need to be straight as well as square to the adjacent edge. Now in theory, for this particular example using Tile 1, if I had material that was cleanly and squarely cut, and it was positioned precisely with its top and right edges aligned with the top and right borders of my workspace, the end result would be fine. If, however, I was a bit sloppy in my placement of the material, the edges would be off and the tiles wouldn't fit together very well. So while an approach like this is possible, it doesn't really seem too practical. So what I opt to do instead is deliberately extend the material past the point of where it needs to be, and then create a profile toolpath to cut the straight edge. I'm going to make these profile toolpaths in a new file to avoid confusion. With the job size set to the size of the tiles, I'm going to position guidelines along all four edges and use the polyline tool to draw lines along those guidelines. Next, I'll set up a profile toolpath for each separate line segment. Be careful when selecting the outside or inside option in the machine vectors section. The correct choice can seem counterintuitive. 
For example, when machining this uppermost horizontal line, the bit should be cutting on this side of the line, which may seem like the outside, but a preview demonstrates that this isn't the case. The inside option for this particular line is the way to go. Putting this into practice then, after running the regular toolpaths for tile 1, for example, you would also run the straight edge profile toolpaths for the top and right edges. For tile 2, the top and left edges. Tile 3, the bottom and right. And tile 4 would be the left and bottom. Finally, the last step I'm going to take prior to routing is to create a drilling toolpath to locate the position of the hold down screws. Because the tiles are the full size of my router bed, some of these holes are going to be located within the actual part. I want to be certain the bit doesn't crash into the screws while the other portions of the job are being machined. I like to draw a 3 8 inch diameter circle to represent the maximum size of the screw head with a 16 inch diameter circle inside of it. With the 16 inch diameter circle selected, I'm going to choose the drilling tool path and specify a cut depth of a quarter of an inch using a 16 inch end mill. When saving the tool pass, place a check mark in the output tiled tool pass box. This option will create a separate tool path for each particular tile. If you're not running vCarve Pro or other software with a similar tiling function, it's still possible to cut oversized pieces like this. It's just a bit trickier and more time consuming. In this example, I'm going to run through a process that could be used to create tile 4 manually. The first step is to define the borders of the tile. This tile's left edge is located at x24 and the bottom edge at y18. I'd still like to use the quarter inch tile overlap though, so I'm going to position the guidelines one quarter inch to the left and bottom to reflect this. Next, I'm going to use the Polyline tool to draw lines along these guidelines. Now it's time to separate the elements of Tile 4 from the rest of the sign using a Vector Trim tool. I'll then copy and paste the elements of Tile 4 into a new file that has a job size equal to the size of my router bed. I'm going to place the lower left-hand corner of this vector group at negative quarter inch in both X and Y directions to account for the overlap, and then toolpath the main elements of the sign. Running these toolpaths, followed by the left and bottom straight edge profiles, will produce the desired tile. A similar approach would then be used for the remaining tiles. For the routing demonstration, I'm going to use Tile 2 as an example. Looking at the two-dimensional view, we can see this tile has its straight edges along the left and top sides. Consequently, I want to place the material on the spoil board so it extends slightly past the point of where the left and top borders of the tile will be located. In this case, that's the left and top border of my spoil board. You can see I have the material overhanging the left edge of the work area by about half an inch. That's all that would be necessary along the top edge as well, but I'm working with a two foot by four foot piece of material, so the overhang is much greater. First, I'm going to run a drilling tool path to spot the location of the hold down screws. And then secure the material to the spoil board. Next, I'm going to run the primary tool path, which consists of inlay pocketing, and a profile of the rounded portion of the sign. Finally, I'll run the straight edge profile tool pass for the top and left sides of the tile. When it's time to sand the tiles, I'm going to work the straight edges as lightly as possible. The more sanding these edges receive, the less likely the tiles are to fit together tightly. After all the tiles were cut and lightly sanded, I glued them, one at a time, to a larger piece of backing material, in this case quarter inch plywood. The plywood was then rough cut into the circular shape of the sign using a jigsaw. The final adjustments were made using an 80 grit sanding disc attached to an angle grinder. 
All right, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave them here or on my associated website, cnc.paulely.net. See you next time.